1939, debatably the most important year ever in the history of comic books. It was the year that the superheroes finally began to take dominance for the first time in history. DC was leading the pack. It was the first full year of Superman being published, and other superheroes would follow, including Batman, later in the year. The year started off with a relaunch of five different Centaur publication titles with new volumes and new number ones. Amazing Mystery Funnies, Volume 2, Number 1, January 1939, published by Centaur Publications. The majority of comic strips in this issue are reprinted from previous comics from Centaur. Skyrocket Steel is featured on the cover with art by Terry Gilkison. And the strip Skyrocket Steel appears in four pages drawn by Bill Everett in this early science fiction strip, which features the characters Sari Marston, King Cull, and the villain Vance Roy. Funny Pages, Volume 3, Number 1, January 1939, published by Centaur Publications. There is a Bruce Wayne prototype in the story, Case of the Missing Hair, by Bob Kane. And this would appear three months before the first appearance of Batman. This issue features cover art by Fred Schwab. The Arrow, an early superhero, appears in a six-page story and would later be reprinted in The Arrow, Number 1, from Centaur in 1940. In the case of The Missing Hair is a seven-page story written and drawn by Bob Kane, and it's actually reprinted from Detective Picture Stories number 5 from 1937. Funny Picture Stories, Volume 3, Number 1, January 1939, published by Centaur Publications. The majority of the comic strips in this issue were reprinted from previous comics from Centaur. Art includes Bob Kane, Al McWilliams, and Paul Gustafson in this issue. There is a five-page canvas duster story written by Irving Settle with art by Paul Gustafson. The statement of the ownership management, circulation, etc. was published in this issue and it showed Lloyd Jaquette as the editor, Joseph Hardy as the publisher, Raymond Kelly as the owner and business manager, and S.J. Fried also listed as an owner along with Harl Publications, Inc. and Centaur Publications, Inc. Keen Detective Funnies, Volume 2, Number 1, January 1939, published by Centaur Publications. Many of the strips in this issue are reprinted from previous comics published by Centaur. The cover art is by Terry Gilkison. Rocky Baird is a seven-page story written and drawn by Paul Loretta. Star Ranger Funnies, Volume 2, Number 1, January 1939, published by Centaur Publications. The cover art is by Jack Cole and is a Western Frontier theme. And Jack Cole gave us the humor strip Home in the Ozarks, which runs four pages, which he wrote and drew, featuring the characters Duddy Heifer and Fud Heifer. Rangeography is a one-page strip written and drawn by Terry Gilkison, a biographical strip that which features the characters Captain L.H. McNelly, John Wesley Harding, and Sam Houston, and gives us a bios of the historic Texas Rangers and facts about the Rio Grande and the Mavericks that populated the early Texas frontier territory. Single series number two, Bronco Bill, January 1939, published by United Features Syndicate. Bronco Bill is featured in the cover in this Western Frontier strip. Bill shoots while riding his horse. There's 63 pages worth of Bronco Bill comic strips in this issue, written and drawn by Harry O'Neill. And there is a Tip Top Comics promo ad in this issue. Little Giant Detective Funnies, number four, January 1939, published by Centaur Publications. This is the extremely rare last issue of this series in small dimension size, but now printed in an upright position. Issues number two and three are not known to exist of this series, so this lone issue was printed in 1939. Jumbo Comics, number five, January 1939, published by Fiction House. This book is oversized, 10.5 by 14.5 inches, therefore cannot be graded by the CGC. It has a full color cover, black and white interior. It's considered scarce by Gerber. There is a Christmas cover. There is a mile high pedigree copy of this book from the Edgar Church Collection. Highlights of artwork include Will Eisner, Dick Briefer, Bob Kane, and Bob Powell. Parts of this issue are reprinted from various past issues of WAGS, the UK comic from Editor's Press Service. 
including issues number 36, 38, 42, 81, 82, and 83. The cover art is by Will Eisner and features Sheena, The Hawk, Spencer Steele, and Dr. Hayward. Bobby is a two-page strip written and drawn by Jerry Iger in his humor story and is reprinted from a previous issue of WAGS. And it also features cameos of Edward G. Robinson, Charlie McCarthy, Laurel and Hardy, the Marx Brothers, and Edgar Bergen. Hawks of the Seas is a four-page story written and drawn by Will Eisner under the alias Willis B. Renzi in his historical adventure strip featuring the Hawk and Captain Clog. And this is reprinted from WAGS UK number 74. Uncle Otto is a short strip written and drawn by Will Eisner under the alias Carl Heck. Peter Pup is four pages written and drawn by Bob Kane. His funny animal story reprinted from WAGS UK number 40. The Count of Monte Cristo is a four-page strip drawn by Lou Fine under the alias Jack Cortez. And this adventure strip is reprinted from WAGS UK number 80. Pee Wee is a short strip written and drawn by Jerry Iger. Featuring the characters Pee Wee and Tommy, reprinted from the Universal Phoenix Syndicate, dated October and November 1937. Gilda Gay is a half-page story written and drawn by Bernard Bailey, dated August 24th, 1937, from Universal Phoenix Features. Sheena is a three-page story written by Will Eisner under the alias W. Morgan Thomas, with art possibly by Mort Meskin. This jungle strip features the fifth American appearance of Sheena, the Queen of the Jungle, and is reprinted from WAGS UK number 72. Just Laughs is a half-page cartoon written and drawn by Bob Kane. The Hunchback of Notre Dame is four pages drawn by Dick Briefer in this historical drama strip featuring the characters Esmeralda and Gringar. And this is reprinted from WAGS UK number 35 and adapted from the novel by Victor Hugo. ZX5 Spies in Action is three pages written and drawn by Will Eisner under the alias Major Thorpe featuring the characters ZX5. And this is reprinted from WAGS UK number 65. Ken Hammond is a two-page text story written by Lynn Davies with art by Lou Fine, and it's a jungle theme. The Diary of Dr. Hayward is four pages drawn by Lou Fine under the alias Kurt Davis. And this is reprinted from an issue of WAGS UK. And Wilton of the West is a four-page story drawn by Lou Fine under the alias Fred Sandy. The Western Frontier strip taken from Universal Phoenix Features. Action Comics number 8, January 1939, published by DC Comics. This is Superman's eighth appearance, and it's his first use of super hearing in this issue. Fred Gardiner did the cover art, which features the British Army, Native Americans, and Tomahawks, and is a homage to the illustration The Battle at Glen Falls from the book Last of the Mohicans. The on-sale date of this book was November 25th, 1938. There's a Billy Wright pedigree copy of this book. The Superman story in this issue is 12 pages long from the team of Siegel and Schuster with inks by Paul Loretta. This is an early superhero story and features early appearances of Superman, Clark Kent. Also, Frankie Morello, Boxiers, Nick, Pinky, and the villain Gimpy. Superman decides to get involved in a case involving wayward boys being used by a petty criminal who uses the boys to steal items from wealthy people that he can sell for quick cash at their expense. In this story, Superman wears red boots. The S symbol is all yellow and Superman uses super hearing for the first time. Superman gets quite violent, punching a man who is on the phone and throwing his entire body against the wall and then dropping him face first into a garbage can. The police are about to arrest a different boy when Superman grabs the boy and the policemen order Superman to stop and start shooting at him. Superman later leaps through the air while carrying a boy under each arm. Superman saves a life by blocking a speeding bullet. Superman tosses the rifleman later into the river. Another punk kid hits Superman on the back of the head with a wrench, but it bends and Superman feels no pain. Superman carries two punks and walks a telephone wire and risks their life to scare them. However, they say they like it. Later, Superman is able to leap over numerous city blocks in one giant leap. Superman uses his bare hands to knock down some cheaply made slum buildings to help end a crime wave in the area. 
Also in this issue, there's Pep Morgan, a six-page strip written by Gardner Fox with art by Fred Gardiner under the alias Gene Baxter. Tex Thompson is a lengthy 10-page strip, possibly written by Ken Fitch, with art by Bernard Bailey, featuring the characters Tex Thompson and the villain Dr. Kichung. Odds and Ends is a short story drawn by Sheldon Moldoff. Scoop Scan on Five Star Reporter is a six-page strip drawn by Will Eli. Zaytera Master Magician is a lengthy 12-page strip written by Gardner Fox with art by Fred Gardiner, and this is the eighth appearance of Zaytera. And Oscar the Gumshoe is a short comic story from artist Bob Kane. Crackerjack Funnies, number 8, January 1939, published by Dell Comics. This features the first appearance of the character Speed Bolton. The on-sale date of this issue was December 16th, 1938. There is a Dell Comics file copy in existence. Tom Trailer G-Man X32 is featured on the cover with art by James Gary, and this is a blow-up of an interior panel. And Don Winslow appears in a four-page story written by Lieutenant Frank Martinek with art by Leon Baroth in this war adventure strip. Super Comics number 9, January 1939, published by Dell Comics. The on-sale date of this issue is December 20th, 1938. There is a Dell Comics file copy in existence. Dick Tracy is featured on the cover, and there is a four-page Dick Tracy strip written and drawn by Chester Gould, and is dated August 22nd, 1938. And there is also a two-page Dick Tracy text story called A Dick Tracy Thriller, with art by Chester Gould. Comics on Parade, number 10, January 1939, published by United Features Syndicate. Little Abner is featured on the cover. There is a mile-high pedigree copy of this book from the Edgar Church Collection. There are six pages of Little Abner strips. Other highlights include Tarzan, Abby and Slats, Captain and the Kids, Ella Cinders, and Bronco Bill. Feature Funnies, number 16, January 1939, published by Quality Comics. Mickey Finn is featured on the cover, drawn by Ed Cronin. Screen Snapshots is a one-page cartoon written and drawn by Bernard Bailey, featuring the character Hedy Lamar. This is Eisner Eigershot material, possibly reprinted from WAGS UK. Archie O'Toole is a two-page story written and drawn by Will Eisner under the alias Bud Thomas. This humor tale features the first appearance of Susie, and this comes from the Eisner Iger shop. Gallant Knight is a four-page story written and drawn by Vernon Henkel in this historical strip featuring Sir Neville, and the first appearance possibly of the villain The Black Baron, and this comes from the Eisner Iger shop. The superhero The Clock appears in five pages in The Clock Strikes, written and drawn by George Brenner, and features the villains Slick Heart and Jip Nolan, and this comes from the Eisner Iger shop. Espionage is a four-page story written and drawn by Will Eisner under the alias Will Irwin in this spy story featuring Black X, first appearance of the villains The Purple Hoods and Batu. And this comes from the Eisner Iger shop. Ace Comics number 22, January 1939, published by David McKay Publications. The Cats and Jammer Kids are featured on the cover, drawn by H.H. H. Nur. Jungle Jim appears in a four-page story drawn by Alex Raymond. And The Phantom appears in an early superhero strip, the 13th appearance in American comic books of The Phantom, written by Lee Falk, with art by Ray Moore. Detective Comics, number 23, January 1939, published by DC Comics, with an on-sale date of December 5th, 1938. Speed Saunders is featured on the cover in this detective mystery, drawn by Fred Gardiner, featuring snow skiing. Speed Saunders appears in a six-page strip written by Gardner Fox with art by Fred Gardiner and features the first appearance of a villain and of Margaret Lee. Larry Steele is a six-page story written and drawn by Will Eli, featuring the villain Baron Pakloff, and the first appearance of Lord and Lady Ashley. The early superhero strip The Crimson Avenger appears in a six-page story drawn by Jim Chambers and features the villain The Boss and his zombies, and this is their first appearance. Railroad Riddle is a two-page text story written by Gardner Fox under the alias Paul Dean. Spy is eight pages from the team of Siegel and Schuster, featuring the villain Dr. LaForge in his first appearance. Dr. Fu Manchu is a two-page story written by Sax Romer with art by Leo Omialia in this adventure strip reprinted and adapted from the insidious Dr. Fu Manchu by Sax Romer. 
Cops and Robbers is a short cartoon written and drawn by Bob Kane. And Slam Bradley is a lengthy 13-page strip from writer Jerry Siegel with art from the Schuster Shop. First time it's been ever listed as this in this detective mystery story featuring the first appearance of Professor Kenton, a bird man, and an orange man. And the villain is the first appearance of a, a flower man. And Slam and Shorty go to the year 2 million A.D. in this story. The Funnies, number 28, January 1939, published by Dell Comics. The cover features ice skating. Scribbly appears in three pages from writer-artist Sheldon Mayer. Four Ace is a two-page story from writer-artist Hal Forrest, taken from newspaper reprints. The Wonderland of Oz is a two-page story written by L. Frank Baum, the creator of The Wizard of Oz, with art by Walt Spouse. The Crime Busters with Al Brady is a four-page story drawn by Al McWilliams. Song of the Buckaroo is a six-page story credited to writer John Rathmel with art possibly by Frank Frollo in this Western Frontier strip adapted from the monogram picture starring Tex Ritter. Tip Top Comics, number 33, January 1939, published by United Features Syndicate. Tarzan and a Grill are featured on the cover. There is a Lost Valley Pedigree copy of this book. There are five pages of Tarzan strips, and this issue also features highlights such as Little Abner, Captain and the Kids, Ella Sanders, Jim Hardy, and Frankie Doodle. Adventure Comics, number 34, January 1939, published by DC Comics. This is the third issue of one of DC's most popular titles, which would run for 45 years. The series was originally titled New Comics from number 1 to 11, and then New Adventure Comics from 12 to 31. The on-sale date of this issue is December 9th, 1939, and there is a mile-high pedigree copy of this book from the Edgar Church Collection. The cover art is by Fred Gardiner. Federal Men appear in four pages from the team of Siegel and Schuster, featuring the the villains Biff Davis and Red. The Sports Teacher is a one-page strip drawn by Sheldon Moldoff. Dale Daring is a four-page strip written and drawn by Will Eli. Captain Desmo is six pages written and drawn by Ed Winianarski and features the villain The Masked Man. Professor Doolittle is a one-page strip written and drawn by Bob Kane. Cinema Dust is a one-page strip drawn by Sheldon Moldoff and features the characters Edward G. Robinson, William Powell, and Deanna Durbin. Candid Comic Camera is a one-page strip written and drawn by Bob Kane. Now You Know is one page drawn by Sheldon Moldoff. Rusty and His Pals is four pages written and drawn by Bob Kane featuring the villain Long Sin. Anchors Away is six pages from writer-artist Fred Gardiner, featuring the villain Raymond Fernando. And Tiny is a one-page story written and drawn by Fred Schwab. This humorous story features the first and only appearance of Tiny and is printed in the inside back cover. King Comics number 34. January 1939, published by David McKay Publications. Popeye and Henry are featured on the cover and are highlights of this issue. There is a Lost Valley Pedigree copy of this book. Popular Comics, number 36, January 1939, published by Dell Comics. Skippy is featured on the cover. Scribbly appears in a short strip drawn by Sheldon Mayer. Don Dixon and the Hidden Empire appears in two pages from writer Bob Moore and art by Carl Fufer in this early science fiction strip. And Jack Randall is a six-page strip based on the monogram movie. More Fun Comics, number 39, January 1939. Published by DC Comics. This is a Christmas theme cover. It was on sale on December 1st, 1938. There's a Mile High Pedigree copy of this book from the Edgar Church Collection. The cover art is by Craig Flessel and features Santa Claus and elves who are on strike. The Masked Ranger is a six-page strip written and drawn by Jim Chambers in a Western Frontier theme. The Masked Ranger rescues a young man from a lynch mob. Johnny Law is a four-page story drawn by Will Eli. Features the character of Bozo Brogan. Radio Squad is six pages from the team of Siegel and Schuster, featuring the characters Sandy Keen and Larry Trent. Ginger Snap is two pages from writer artist Bob Kane and his humor strip. Peeking at Pictures is one page cartoon from writer artist Sheldon Moldoff. Buccaneer is five pages from writer artist Bernard Bailey, featuring the characters Dennis Stone and Captain Claug. Mickey Mouse Magazine. Number 40, 
Volume 4, Number 4, published by Western Publishing, January 1939. Mother Pluto strip reprints begin in this issue. Spotty the Greedy Little Pig appears. The on-sale date of this issue is December 9th, 1938. Donald Duck is featured on the cover, drawn by Tom Wood. Just Between Us is a one-page text story with art by Floyd Godfordson. Mickey Mouse appears in two pages, written by Meryl Damaris, with art by Floyd Godfordson. Morty and Ferdy is a one-page comic strip, written by Meryl Damaris, with with art by Floyd Godfordson. Pluto is a two-page strip with art by Al Taliaferro. And Spotty the Greedy Little Piglet is a two-page strip drawn by Al Taliaferro. Famous Funnies, number 54, January 1939, published by Eastern Color. This was still the longest-running comic book ever up to this point. Buck Rogers, Chief Wahoo, Dickie Dare, Scorchy Smith, and many other feature in this book. Okie Dokes is featured on the cover with art by Victor Pasmino. Buck Rogers appears in a four-page story written by Philip Francis Nolan with art by Rick Yeager under the alias Dick Kelkins in the classic early science fiction strip. And Jerry Iger under the alias Bob Liss gives us the one-page strip, Queenie. <laughs> 